everyone. Today we are going to be connecting my PS4 controller or any modern day game controller to an ESP32 via Bluetooth. That way you can control all kinds of things like robots, robot vehicles, animatronics, motorized props, just like this guy right here that I've been working on for far too long. Or even cooler, a battle bot. And to get these two talking, there are a variety of Arduino libraries out there. The one we're going to be using today is called BluePad32. All right, you know what time it is. To the code! Once you're in your Arduino IDE, there are two, I call them pre-setup steps that we're going to have to go through. The first is to add board managers for both the ESP32 and the BluePad32. And we're going to do that by going to File, Preferences. And here, under Additional Board Manager URLs, pop that open. I have two URLs, one on each line. Now, this first one is for installing the Boards Manager for your ESP32 board. And this second one right here is for the BluePad32 Boards Manager. And links for those are below. So all you have to do is copy those links and paste them in here and click OK and OK again. Now we have to add the boards. So starting with the ESP32, we're going to go to Tools and Boards Manager. And here, just start typing in ESP32. And the one you want to add is this ESP32 by Espressive Systems. I already have it installed. Oh, and it looks like there's an update. Nice try. It wants me to click the update, so then everything will crash and burn. You know how it is while you're trying to shoot a video. Uh-uh, I'll do that later. After that, let's do the blue pad one. So just add blue pad, and it's the very first one that pops up. So go ahead and install that too. Our two pre-setup steps are done. Let's go ahead and choose our board. And under here, you want to go under ESP32 blue pad 32. They have a huge list of options, so this can be a little bit confusing, but the first one to try is usually this Do It ESP32 Dev Kit version one. This is a really popular board, so if you bought yours on places like Amazon, this is probably the one you have. After that, let's select our port, and mine happens to be COM6. All right, the boring stuff is done, so let's get to the fun part. Let's bust out an example sketch, so I'm going to go down here and look for blue pad 32 and pop open this controller example. If you are a total beginner, this can seem pretty overwhelming, but the lucky part is that there's only three main sections that we have to worry about. Scrolling down, let's find our first section. And it is right here, this dump gamepad. And what this does is print to the serial monitor what all of our buttons do. So that way you can assign functions like turning on motors, LEDs, moving servos to each of your controls. So the ones that stand out to me for a PS4 controller, of course, is the D-pad. Then we have a variety of buttons. We have our left joystick, so this will track the values along the X axis. This will track along the Y axis. And then we also have that right joystick. And here, this will track X values and this will track Y values. And then of course, the controller has a lot of other functionalities that you can tap into and features that are compatible with other controllers. This can also control mice, keyboards, as well as balance boards. So not all of this may apply to your controller, but it doesn't hurt to just leave it in there. Continuing to scroll down, the second section that you have to pay attention to is this process gamepad. This is where you're going to put all the code to activate components on your robot, your vehicle, or your animatronic. And they give you a couple examples to get you started. So far, we don't know what button A is or button B, and this button X may not correspond with the X on my PS4 controller. So I'm going to show you a better way of determining what button is which. And then the final section that you have to pay attention to, and this is going to be some scrolling, and it's easy to scroll past it, 
It is our void setup pin modes, attaching servos to certain pins. This part, because it's towards the bottom, is easy to forget. And then at the very bottom is our loop, where you can see that the process controllers is called. And that's the section where you have all those actions. So I say we upload this as is and see what happens. I'm going to pop open the serial monitor and reset the board by pressing the EN button. Some information has popped up, so it's now time to pair your controller with your ESP32. As soon as that happens, you see all kinds of stuff going on here. So all this information that's being populated here is coming from one of the three important sections that we talked about. And that is this section right here, the dump gamepad. It's basically dumping all these values for you to see. And we can start seeing how these are associated. So the first one is this D-pad. And if you look towards the left, you can see values for the D-pad and they're zero times zero, zero. So there's these hex values. So what I'm going to do is press up on my D-pad and watch that number very closely. I'm going to hold it. It changes. It goes zero, one, and then pressing the down zero, two, zero, eight, and zero, four for our right. And moving on to the buttons, I'm going to press my triangle button and you can see zero, zero, eight and then ending in 001 for the X, and then the square ends in 004 and 002. Take a sheet of paper out and write down every button and the value associated with it, because that way you can assign different components to do different things for each button. Now let's talk joysticks. And one of the things you see here for our left X, it's telling us to expect a value anywhere from negative 511 to positive 512. That means that the middle is zero. And if I thumb to the left, I should get all the way to 511. If I thumb to the right, all the way to 512. Watch that very first number there. I'm not even touching it and it's already kind of fluctuating. And we're gonna talk about that in a bit. So thumbing to the left, oh, it's getting more negative. Can I hit, oh, see, mine only goes to 508 or negative 508. All right, let's try now all the way to the right. It should go to 512 and it does. So why does mine not match what's written here? You're going to find this a lot with game controllers. They're not going to be perfect. So it's important to write these values down. So that way, if you want to accelerate a motor, you know what your left top end and your right top end are. And even more important, pay attention to that idle. I'm not touching anything and it's fluctuating. You want to get a clear idea of what the fluctuation range is because you're gonna to have to establish an idle for your project. If you say that the idle is zero, but then all these fluctuations are happening, your robot or your project is just gonna move intermittently. Jump just one more column over and I am going to thumb up. Thumbing up causes the numbers to decrease. Let's see what we get, a 508. All right, so at least it's consistently wrong. <laughs> and 512. And then I'm gonna let go and you can see that on the Y, I'm getting like anywhere from four-ish to eight-ish in the positive side, but the X is on the negative. And this is absolutely normal for pretty much all joysticks. And the more that you wear in your joystick, later on, you may have to come back to your code and make some adjustments. So we're gonna move along the X plane for the right joystick. So it's that first column of numbers there and they should go down to, I'm gonna guess 508 and then 512 when I thumb all the way to the right and then thumbing up, it should go negative to 508 and then positive to 512. And if I let go, we get a different idle situation for this joystick. So make sure to write all this down or else you're going to get like a jerky robot or project. And of course, there are tons of other numbers for you to match up. And it really depends on the controller that you're using. So for instance, you can see the gyro when I start rotating my controller around, the numbers go all crazy. But we're mostly going to focus on the D-pad buttons, the regular buttons, and both joysticks.
This is a template that I use to start any game controller project. We put this together via live video chat with my community members. Link for that is below. You can get personalized help. Show me where you're getting stuck and where you are in your project. It's the same as the example sketch, except I took out all the code that references other controllers. So this is only for using with gamepad controllers. And you can see I added a section for pin connections because no doubt you are going to be adding some cool stuff to your project. And to allow us to test any of the buttons, I like to use the built-in LED for the ESP32. And that is connected on pin two. Scrolling down, I made it much clearer where you go to see the controller values in the serial monitor. And then here is where you make your game controllers action section. In this action section, I spelled out every button and joystick. Yeah. So for the PS4 X button, that gave me a value of 0001. If the button that I press is equal to that 0001, then it knows I'm pressing the X button. So here I'm telling it to digital write that built-in LED high, which means turn on that built-in LED. And then if I'm not pressing the X button, then turn that built-in LED low or off. So you can see for buttons, it's always if a certain button was pressed and set it equal to the unique number that you got. Then you can put code in here to activate or put in a bunch of switch cases if you want to toggle through different options. And then of course, if that button with that specific identifier is not pressed, then you can turn off certain features. So you can use this entire section right here to pop in your code for every button and joystick on the PS4 controller and easily adapt it for any game controller. But then let's not forget the very last section that we have to pay attention to, and that is the setup. I set my pin mode for our built-in LED as an output. All right, let's test this out. So always to start with, don't forget to reboot your ESP32 by pressing the EN button, and then you can connect. We set that built-in LED to pin two which is assigned to the X button. Let's see what happens when I push it. Look at that, it comes on, it comes off. And that's just this bit of code right there. If you have any questions about the code you just saw, post in the comments below. But better yet, if you wanna grab that code, do it on my website or sign up for my newsletter. It is totally free. You get all of my tutorials delivered right to your inbox. So that way you don't miss anything. Next time we are going to be connecting LEDs, servos, and motors to this and then controlling it with my PS4 controller. If you want more personalized help, I invite you to join my community where we have live workshops every month where we deep dive into particular components, community build sessions to dedicate time to working on our projects together and our popular Arduino project challenges where we build and code along together via live video chat. Link for the community is below. Guys, I had a blast. I'll check you later.